Jim Palotta, thank you very much for being with us today. Five and a half years you've been uh, the owner of AS Roma, half mm -hmm. a decade. Um, could you give us your honest assessment of how it's gone? Sure. I mean, I think it's it feels a lot longer than five and a half years. There's no question about about that. I think I've lost a lot more hair and gotten more gray. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I, as I said, I, I really don't have a lot of patience for things, and I think there were some things we could have done better and some self-inflicted wounds and some that it's just the environment and uh, and a lot to learn. So, I mean, I think overall I'd probably give myself a C. I think we've done some good stuff on the football side, on the content and digital side. I think we've not focused on some things on the commercial side. Um, um, in, in, in not in the stadium commercial piece, because I think we've done a great job on on that and setting it up for the stadium being built. But just generally, there were things on branding and marketing and changes that we probably could have and should have made earlier. Um, so I'll, I'll take a seat. We'll see it's room for improvement. Yeah, um, yep, for sure. You've been very open about um, your ambition for Roma to become everyone's second favorite team. Right. Um, why is that your ambition and how are you going to make it reality? I mean, look, I would like to be everybody's favorite team, but you know, the reality of it is that's never going to happen and it's not going to happen for Real Madrid, it's not going to happen for Man U, it's not going to happen for PSG, it's not going to happen for anybody. And you know, the way the culture grows on it, uh, you know, may go generational to generational and we'll get new fans that don't have a team that they really love yet just learning football or young or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, um, I think if we have our fan base that we're the favorite team of and grow that, but if we can become everybody's second favorite team with 3 billion or so fans that people say there are following football, you know, if we get a small percentage of that, if we get 1%, it's 30 million fans. And 30 million fans is a lot of fans if you get them to appreciate what you're doing and they decide that they want to spend five or ten or fifteen or twenty dollars on a scarf or a hat or even a shirt and that revenue that you can generate from that piece of it too allows you to keep plowing back into the team to make the team and everything for the fan experience better. Mm -hmm. um, you finally got uh, the go-ahead uh, to build a new stadium for right. Roma, the new Coliseum, right. uh, right. aiming to be uh, complete in time for the 2020-21 Hopefully, season. hopefully. Hopefully, fingers yep. crossed. Yep. Um, you were talking earlier on stage here about um, how obviously you want this to be a, a very modern, high-tech arena, but you won't be going down the avenue of tech uh, for tech's sake, right. um, and you talked about seeing, learning from mistakes. Could you yep. talk us through that process and what mistakes, especially, have warned you off? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, I don't want to beat up on stadiums um, um, that I've seen, but I think there have been a lot of mistakes in a lot of stadiums, primarily because they come at it from not thinking about the entire ecosystem or that they have someone in there from commercial or an agency that gets them a sponsorship deal and decide that that's the type of stuff that they should put in, that technology, whether it's these routers or it's this, you know, TV systems or it's the, you know, whatever it might be. I think I've seen so many mistakes like that. And system integration is a big, um, a big piece of it too. Now, my background is technology, so it's not like I'm afraid of tech. I've invested in hundreds and hundreds of private companies, never mind public companies, and I'm and I'm and I would say that's probably as strong a suit that I have, mm -hmm. medium entertainment and tech. So it's not that, you know, we don't want to put tech in, it's just I've seen because of those thirty five years of investing that so many times people get excited about technology and it just doesn't have the application mm -hmm. yet on it or it doesn't have the infrastructure behind it yet. So we wanna make sure that the stadium and the campus itself is capable, you know, that when that tech grows up, then we'll plug and play it, as I said mm -hmm. uh, in the meeting. But just to put something in to say, oh, wow, look at this, you know, I mean, again, you look at something like a virtual reality, I think a number of times people have used it and tried it, and after two or three times, they're like, okay, that was great, and they spent 100 or 200 bucks or 300 bucks on mm -hmm. something, and it's just, it's in the closet. It's in the closet right now. 